to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. of Bob Kennedy from the Rochester Community School Building Corporation. He is resigned at this point. So I need to have a, a motion to accept the nomination of Bob Kennedy's position of being resignated. Bill? <laughs> it's just you and I, buddy. <laughs> Replace Bob Kennedy. All right, so we have a motion to accept the resignation. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Accept the re resignation first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a motion to accept the resignation of Bob Kennedy. Bill and I, <laughs> it's just the two of us, so I. Next then. Can we will. second? What's that, a second? second? Yes, that I motion? second that, and yes. And everybody in favor? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's very difficult when there's only two people. <laughs> All right, then we need to accept nominations for Bob Kennedy's position. I will nominate Ben Dalton to replace Bob Second. Kennedy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, finally, the approval of Ben Dalton's appointment to the Rochester Community School Building Corporation. I make a motion that we approve Ben Dalton as the appointed Board member of the Rochester Community Building School Building Corporation. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here tonight just to consider the approval of the proposed lease agreement. I know we don't have to go into a whole lot of detail, but <coughs> it is just the lease agreement of Rochester High School or a portion of Rochester High School. Um, to contribute to and continue work on the buildings, the natatorium, Correct. continue to work on the natatorium as well as a riddle. Correct. The roofing that riddle. Correct. Okay. Anything further? Anything from me on that? Just to make sure that everybody's familiar with the plans and the specifications as to what the lease is for and that everybody's had an opportunity to review the lease agreement. And if there's any questions or discussions, now would be the time to bring those forward. I have no questions. I know you have the opportunity. <laughs> I, I do want to thank the three of them. We have uh, had uh, multiple conversations, sometimes through phone, sometimes in person, sometimes through text. And I know that we kind of throw you into the mix, especially Ben, uh, not being through this before. <laughs> But your role is a vitally important role, and I appreciate the time that you have spent with me over the past two weeks understanding um, the, the importance of this and your willingness to support Rochester schools as we move forward. I know it's not a huge time commitment month after month, but the role that you play is a very vital role for Rochester schools and what this board needs to do moving forward. So thank you. So I'm confident they've had information. and. We don't have to move on that, correct? Yes. We do need to? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we need to approve the proposed lease agreement at this time. So I need a motion to approve. So moved. Seconded. All in favor of considering the approval of the proposed lease agreement? Say aye. 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 <clears throat> yes. Lastly, this very long, lengthy meeting is the consideration of the approval of the trust indenture and bonds. Anything further need to be said on that? <laughs> it's a very intense document. Does anybody have any questions about the type of bond and the amount of the bond, um, what your payments are going to be under the lease agreement, those kinds of things? 
Okay. If you have a um, Exhibit B in front of you, that is the um, resolution where you're going to improve, approve the trust indenture, also known as the bond. And so you can uh, entertain a motion. Okay. Wish to make the motion, either of you, to approve the trust indenture bond. So moved. Seconded. <laughs> I'm just not sure how well you can hear, so I want to make sure we move not, on. Not, not well, but it's okay. <laughs> all right, so we have a motion and a second, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Anything further at this time? We just need to make sure that the uh, documents you have in front of you, specifically the Exhibit A and the Exhibit B, get signed uh, before you leave this evening. But other than that, there's nothing further. Okay. Again, thank you. And thank you, Dr. Von Felder, for joining us this evening. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, but thank you for understanding. I appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. Thank you for not sharing germs. <laughs> 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 All right, so adjourned. 637. Thank you. Well, do I need a motion to do that stage? That's okay. I just adjourn. Okay. <laughs> if you guys want to stay, you're more than welcome to. Make sure to sign whatever documents the board needs us to sign, and I'm sure that we will let you to your business. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about the privacy issue. All right. Thank you both. You're welcome. Do you have this? Documents. Mm -hmm. Well, we have some. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, we have copies if you want to take them through. Like, this way. That's all that they have. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Moving forward, since the uh, meeting has already been opened, we're going to go ahead and ask that um, Mr. Snyder bring his kids in. Ms. Donna Fincher, she is going to um, talk to you guys a little bit about what uh, what we do um, on a daily basis. But I wanted to uh, share a little bit about how this all got started. Uh, we at uh, Columbia were having our flag taken down after hours when no one was around, and uh, we thought to ourselves that this would be a great opportunity um, if we allowed students that would like to participate, that would like to take our Columbia flag down and learn the process of doing that and just learn about the um, the, the proper uh, flag procedures um, and how to care for the flag and also a little bit about the history of the flag. What we started doing a couple of years ago was offering that up to uh, students to be able to do that. And we had uh, various teachers in the building that would volunteer their time to take the kids out and teach them. Um, Donna has uh, graciously accepted uh, responsibility this year for all of the kids and I will tell you Donna has been a blessing to our uh, corporation and, and to Columbia. She opens the door and holds the door at the uh, entr entryway where our kids come in every morning and they get uh, treated to a, a wonderful welcome and a beautiful smile every morning and uh, so we're just so pleased to have you as part of our uh, Columbia family. Um, but I'm going to let you introduce our kiddos. I don't want to take any more time uh, from them, but they're going to show you what they do. Uh, they go out and um, actually take the flag down uh, as a group, and uh, Donna kind of guides them through that. They bring it into our hallway right outside my office, so I get to see it every day and hear it every day, and it's, uh, it, it, it's such a, a treat to, to have. And uh, they uh, fold our flag up for the evening so that it's prepared and ready for the next morning when we put our flag up. So 
Donna? Um, we have this evening for our flag folders from Mrs. Freeman's kindergarten class. This is Harlow. We have Claire, Xander, and Dax. And so uh, every afternoon, we um, every month I have a new class. So this month is Mrs. Freeman's class. Um, these four were my folders earlier today when we took the flag down. We go outside. We uh, remove it from the flagpole. We carry it inside into the hallway. And then we start our folding process, right? So what's the first thing that we do, guys? Do you remember? Find a corner. Find a corner. That's exactly right. So carefully because we don't want to do what? Touch the ground. Touch the ground. We do not want the flag to touch the ground. When you find a corner, share. Excellent. All right. And we'll have two corners down here. One for you, Xander, and one for you, Dax. Oh, careful. Got him? Okay, let's spread out and see how we did. Oh, we need to flip. Can you boys flip with each other? Flip your corners. Trey. Okay, that works too. Nope. <laughs> Close. Yeah. Okay, Dax, you take that corner right there. And Xander, you take this one. Okay, now spread yeah. out. Remember, spread out. Spread out. Spread out. Keep going. Keep going. Good job. Now what are we looking for? What's our first thing that we do? We need to look for the stripe. Stripe that goes all the way across the wow. bottom. Right. Okay. So, Claire, can you hand your corner to Harlow? And Dax, or Xander, can you hand your corner to Dax? Okay. Oops. Nope. Girls, we need to flip. Here. There you go. Now grab the bottom. Great job. Grab the bottom, Xander. Okay. Let's right out again. All right. Now are you ready? Hold on. I think we'll back once. Okay. We're going to put the across. Yep. Yep. Switch. Okay. That works too. Okay, boys. Gather together. No. Yep. Fold, isn't it? Okay, so Dax, you have the first fold. Which way are we going to go? Remember? Yeah, great job. Okay, Xander. Can you come down this way? Move your hands up. Nope. This is uh, quite a process for us every day um, in that, you know, the uh, Think about it. We're talking about six, seven, eight-year-old kids, um, and so they don't have any experience with the flags. And, uh, so it, uh, it it takes some learning. It takes some time, and uh, the kids do a really good job. Um, we uh, we couldn't be any happier than uh, what they do every day and just what they learn from it. So uh, we're super proud of them, and I'm super proud of. Uh, Donna for doing this with these kids every day. Yeah. Don't let go. Don't and if they do go. it more than once, they get different uh, responsibilities for full folding so everybody gets a chance. Okay, Bob's be careful. These are kindergarten kids. These kids have never done this before. Uh, this is their first time doing it. Um, when our first graders do it, they've done it the year before, then they have a little more experience, and uh, it's still a, a really great uh, okay. great thing for them to do. Fold it in half, right? Right. Okay. 
right, fold it. Yep. Boys, you're gonna finish. agenda is to recess the regular board meeting <laughs> and then we will move on to the uh, public hearing regarding the budget capital projects and bus replacement so uh, at this time we are open for public comment Anybody else? <laughs> uh, at this time, then, um, we can move on uh, approving the adoption of the budget year, of the budget for budget year 2024. So I would entertain a motion that we do that. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, do you raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five. We are six, six and six to zero motion carries. Next, we need to approve the adoption of the capital funds project budget year 2024. I will entertain a motion. So moved. Casey. Second. Jenny. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. And next we have approved the adoption of the bus replacement plan for budget year 2024. I'll accept a motion at this time. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Casey. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries, six to zero. And I think that's all of them. And uh, without any further questions or comments, I uh, would like to adjourn the um, special session. Public the public meeting, sorry. So moved. Thank you. We are adjourned. Now we will resume the regular board meeting. And, oh, come on, technology is a great thing until it jumps in your face. Okay, um, next we have the approval of the funds reports as presented. These are on a consent agenda. Did everyone have the opportunity to read through these? For the minutes. Minutes. Oh, I. Minutes, yeah. Okay, I skipped a row. Um, yes, we do have uh, four different, um, minutes from the last uh, from september 5th september 18th september 29th uh october 3rd and uh, a second meeting on october 3rd for the study session so did everybody have a chance to look through those i have a question about september 5th All right. that's going to need a correction um in the people listed in attendance it has katie me ethan and stephen um, but later on in the description of the meeting, it has Mark making a comment. Okay. I don't remember exactly who was here, but I know I was Mark was. I don't know if I Ethan was. was. Cause that was, it says that's the one we were talking about, the uh, wrestling club paying for the rooms, and I made comments on that as okay. well. So it just, it doesn't need a striking of that. It just needs right, an just addition of Mark, Mark in, in attendance. And then on that same, um, group of minutes in the discussion of the bylaw number three just to make sure that it's clear there um, near the end it says that all members felt that in order to ensure a quorum it should be quorum 
and just to, that since they mean different things and someone mm -hmm. could could wonder about that, that needs a correction. And sometimes autocorrect is not our friend. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Did you find that, Amber? Okay. Yes. Anything else, Jenny? I read through them and I did not see any of this, so sorry about that. All right. Um, anyone else have questions or comments about any of these agendas? And I mean uh, minutes. Okay. At this time, I'm going to entertain a motion that we um, approve all the minutes uh, as amended. Just, thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Mark. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Okay, now we can move on to the financial report. And we have the um, the funds report. And everybody get a chance to read through that. That's always fun. Okay. Uh, any questions about the funds report this time? Alrighty, moving on. The claims report. Claims report totaling one million two hundred ninety-three thousand sixty-seven dollars and fourteen cents. Any questions? Um, and then move on to payroll. Approval of the payroll for September 22nd, 2023, and October 6, 2023, and October 20th, 2023, totaling one million one four hundred sixty-two thousand six dollars and forty-six cents. Questions. Okay, at this time I would accept the motion that we approve that we approve all of the financial reports. So moved. Oh wait, I missed one, sorry. Wait you should take the resolution separate, so it's okay to go ahead. Okay. So we'll go who moved that? Stephen? I'll second. Stephen and Ethan. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Appropriations. No. No. Yeah, resolution. Appropriation tax rate. Tax rate. Resolutions. The last one under the financial. Yeah, that's what she said. She said appropriations. I just said appropriations. That's what yeah. I said. Okay, approve appropriation and tax rate resolution. <coughs> Any questions or concerns about this? I'll accept a motion at this time. We approve the appropriation and tax resolution. So moved. Mark. Second. Casey, all those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. Action items. Approval of the 2024-2025 school calendar. If I may, I would like to begin by thanking Mrs. Shelley. Um, I know that she sent out a survey and uh, with that, I don't know that we gained any uh, ground in changing any of the dates without making sacrifices that others weren't willing to. I, I do want to share though that Oscar and I had a conversation after school today and on this would propose moving graduation to June 6th, that Friday, in case there are any inclement weather days, any hiccups, any bumps in the road. Correct, Oscar? Is that what we <laughs> So the calendar um, would stay the same, except we would go in and change that graduation would happen on June 6th. That gives us time if there's weather days that we need to make up, if there are hiccups in any of the processes, those types of things. <coughs> so I would just else? add, if I may, Kate. Sure. Um, so the teachers were not real big on coming back after the war day. Okay? Um, and there was a push to make fall break shorter and not close two days. But I know if we, I know one of the concerns of doing that is 
the kids and teachers who do intercession then don't get a break. Um, and then there was the idea of getting rid of the makeup days and having those days after Memorial Day be makeup days. Um, basically, we just want to not, we want to finish that Memorial Day but get all of our vacation days <laughs> and like eat our, have our cake and then also eat it. So if you could make that happen, that would be really good. Sure, we just need to go on three Saturdays then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, I guess it's just a weird year the way the days fall or something. But also not start July. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that was only the big suggestion was to keep all fall break shorter. But I know the reason is. I guess so. Go ahead. Would you, since you were talking about switching graduation day from the 30th to the 6th, then would you be in session on the 30th? It says the last day is the 29th. So would mm -hmm. school be out that Friday? We would anticipate that unless there were some unforeseen circumstance that would bring them back. Have we looked at, I, I know obviously there's too much to throw around just for something like this, but people have been asking me about it. I said, I don't know off the top of my head how the breaks fall with payroll for hourly employees because I've heard a lot of people this past year um, had talked to me weren't too happy with the way that like spring break fell right between two paychecks so they had two weeks of no money and they would have preferred one week on to get at least a little bit of money over their breaks yeah. and I don't know how possible it is to look at that but I didn't know if that was taken into consideration at all with the way this calendar fell um, because those hourly employees having two weeks with that paycheck just doesn't seem quite well and then they have to wait two weeks for the next one depending on how the payroll stuff so they're potentially a month with no actual income flow. Normally, I say normally payroll is your payroll dates are decided. It's rolling. It's a rolling yeah, calendar. Yeah. They don't reset in January, so it's difficult to even. I, I just didn't know if that, if that was looked day. into at all with the count. I didn't yeah. know the process at all. But if it, if in any way that's possible, I know that that seems like kind of a rough situation if it does fall that way, because you could end up at a, a month with no paycheck. I can understand that, but I don't know how HR would do that because you'd have to skip a week somewhere else to reset it for the year. You know, I mean, unfortunately, that's kind of like everybody else. You know, I mean, when I go on vacation, I have to look at my payrolls, and if it's going to land in between one, you know, you just have to squirrel that money back and know that. Mm -hmm. They totally, totally understand what you're saying, though. Yeah. It is hard. Okay, any other questions? Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion that we approve the calendar um, as amended uh, for graduation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Next is approval of the Washington, D.C. trip, April 4th, 2024. Chrissy, is there anything you'd like to share about the D.C. trip? Um, it's one we went on for several years now. I don't know exactly how many years, but I've gone myself um, several years as well. It's a great trip. Um, kids learn a ton. I learn, every time I go, I learn something new depending on our tour guides and what they have to say. This past year, I actually learned just as much from one of the eighth grade students that I did on the tour guide. So it's, it's a great trip. We have a great time. It is well done with World Strikes. And we would like to keep going. It's year nine. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any comments from anyone else? So at this time, I'd accept a motion that we uh, approve the Washington, D.C. trip for the uh, NJHS in the spring. So moved. Thank you, Mark. Second. And Stephen. All those in favor, raise your right hand. The motion carries six to zero. Approved. Approval of the Meridian contract for Riddle Roof renovation. Anybody have anything to say about that? Terry was here to talk about it. I think we can order a lot of pots and pans and save the district. <laughs> and I'm sure Luke is fine with that. <laughs> you like to do uh, pots and pans in classrooms while you're given uh, the eye ready? It's a learning experience. Yeah, you know, how many drips are in the pan? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
think so that's that. our proposed insurance. People are right by Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and we just hook a, a hose up to some of the drip spots and just funnel it all into one big bucket. All right. Looks like it. Any other suggestions before we move forward? Uh, I would entertain an, a motion to approve uh, a Britian a Britian contract for the Riddlewood renovation. So moved. Thank you, Casey. Second. And All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries six to zero. Uh, next, we have approval of insurance for Rochester Community School Corporation. Darren, do you mind introducing your team and just sharing just very briefly? I know that some of our board members were uh, present last time, but bringing others up to speed. Of course. Um, yes. Others, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Darren Haas, and I'm an uh, insurance agent with RT Insurance, and I know I've uh, met many of you, and um, really appreciate your time. I'm a retired educator, so uh, I've got a lot of soft places in my heart for the little kindergartners that are out here folding the flag. That's pretty cool. So we're excited about that. Um, I'll let these guys introduce themselves too. Okay. David Paul, state manager for Astra Insurance. We are your proposed insurance carrier for the property and casualty insurance. And I just want to um, say thank you for all the good work you guys do. Um, and we're, we specialize in insuring schools. and. Um, we understand there's a lot of hardships that schools go through. And so one of the things that we do um, to partner with your school is we provide risk management and safety services. And actually we brought our risk manager here, Pierce Overbacon. So I'll let you uh, meet him and introduce himself. As he said, my name is Pierce Overbacon. I'm the risk manager for the state of Indiana. Um, you know, we do a lot of work with schools and municipalities, but schools is really um, where our expertise lies and we're very aware of limitation of budgets and how to work with you and figure out the best course of action to keep, uh, you know, the students, staff, and everyone safe and working the way it should. And uh, provide a lot of policies, procedures, so you don't need to recreate the wheel in any sort of way, so you're not wasting time creating things and look over, um, you know, employee handbooks and safety walkthroughs and train and all sorts of HR and OSHA topics. So really try to help out in any way we can. Sounds good. I did, but this is for the benefit of the principals, I did ask if they, uh, if they cover schools. <laughs> <laughs> they cover the answer was. <laughs> <laughs> we do cover Zebby, though. Zebby is protected. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, at this time, are there any questions from the community or from the from the gallery? What? Nope. I will entertain a motion <laughs> that we approve RT insurance. So moved. So. Okay, you got to speak. You, can't, you know, waving didn't work. Okay, I know you're new, but you've been down this road before. Okay, thank you. We need to separate them. I it's think we do. Yeah. We just said gallery. I thought you must yeah. forgot to say. Piece. She went I this way. That's why I said us <laughs> with a question. All those in favor. Motion carries six to zero. And I want to thank you, gentlemen, for your uh, time and due diligence with Todd and myself. And I know that we've had some hiccups moving forward and. You guys were persistent yet kind and patient with us, so thank you. And I'm looking forward to working with the three of you. And um, I know you had a chance to meet Jason for school safety, but really want you to engage with the team and looking forward to that working relationship. Thank you. Uh, you guys are free to go. I know you've got to drive. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy, enjoy the watermelon. <laughs> you so excited. Oh, thanks, you got Dave. Dave. Yeah, <laughs> Nobody ever says, no, it's fine, we'll stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And moving on, information. Second reading of bylaw 0164.50. And uh, do y'all want me to read that to you, or are you good? Good. OK, this is uh, the one about the changes, I mean, the changes to uh, administration. Is it? 
to the board to meetings. The oh, the board the meetings board and how many meetings we can miss and how many we can zoom in and that yes, kind of correct. thing. So that, that's uh, so this is a second reading and we won't be voting on that till our next meeting. And then we have notice of a hearing on a proposed mm -hmm. lease. Okay. Do we need to read all this? No. Good. Okay. <laughs> We've got a, a, a hearing on a proposed lease. Janie, you want to explain that? I'll look more towards Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> so the lease agreement that the building corporation considered uh, at the meeting at 630 this evening, which they approved, um, this is your end of approval, but you guys are required to have a hearing on this. And so this is the same lease agreement that encumbers part of the high school in order to secure this bond. Either the corporation is entering into or the building corporation leases the premises from um, the Rochester School Corporation. And so this is just notice to everybody that there is going to be a hearing um, regarding this lease agreement and whether or not the Board of School Trustees will enter into it. Okay. Thank you, Lauren. And moving on, student stakeholder, student and stakeholder focus. We have uh, donations. Were there any changes this afternoon? Can okay, no, I have more? All right. Uh, donations uh, to RHS. New five thousand dollars used at the stair chair. Um, from the Rochester Fire Department and Lutheran EMS. RHS Key Club, $357.51, working at the Fulton County Fair, and that's from the Fulton County Fair Board. RHS Choir, $36.46, free will donation at the concert, and that is from donated by concert attendees. And RHS Athletics, $150 for serving elephant ears at the football games, and that's from the Red Elephant. So uh, we're grateful for these um, donations and always uh, appreciate helping out our kids the way the community does. So thank you for that. Um, can we uh, I'd entertain a motion that we accept these donations? So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Mark got there first. All right. And uh, all those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. Moving on. Personnel report. You didn't bring me a, a cheat sheet, so I figured it hasn't changed. Is that right? It has not. Okay. okay. And I forgot. I it's fine. I'm good. I got new glasses. It helps. Okay. Uh, recommendations for October 23rd from Riddle Fall Intercession. Amy Freeman, teacher at her hourly rate. Do I need to read those, or is that for board? You don't have to read. Okay. Uh, Joanna Johnson, teacher at her hourly rate. Corinne Hines, hourly rate. Heather Schaefer, instructional assistant, at her regular hourly rate. For Rochester High School, fall intercession. Lucy Hernandez, teacher, hourly rate. Ken Hughes, teacher, hourly rate. Isaac Schaefer, teacher, hourly rate. Deb Wolford, teacher, hourly rate. For RHS athletic recommendations, Joe McCarter, RHS boys basketball and RHS girls basketball volunteer coach. Zach Deshawn, RHS girls back basketball volunteer coach. Colt Meadows, RHS girls basketball volunteer coach. Alec Garrick, RHS boys basketball volunteer coach. Alec Holland, RHS boys basketball volunteer coach. FMLA. Jennifer Snyder, from October 27th, 2023 through approximately December 12th, 2023. Retirement, Wendy Zent, effective December 20th, 2023. Resignation, Alexa Rude, effective October 3rd, 2023. Any questions? I would accept a motion to approve the personnel report as read. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Ethan. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Superintendent's business. We'll go ahead and begin by having um, principals and the uh, directors report out. So, Jason, if you want to start, please. Thank you for organizing tonight's presentation. Oh, well. uh, 
couple of things that uh, since we've had fall break, um, we've uh, had our intercession this uh, over fall break. That went really well. Uh, we also had our uh, annual fall festival. I'll let Luke talk a little bit more about that, but uh, and he can tell you about the attendance on that. But I know that we had uh, brought in over about a, what about 170 pumpkins mm -hmm. um, that were donated from the um, Optimist Club, and uh, that was for every kid to be able to get a pumpkin, paint a pumpkin, and uh, take that pumpkin home. So. Uh, we're very happy for that. We uh, completed our vision screenings uh, today for first grade, and um, we also did uh, participated in the uh, Great Shakeout, which is um, the um, earthquake drill that uh, the whole country kind of does. It's not a requirement, uh, but it's a optional thing. So we did that. Um, things that we've uh, got going on. Um, it's kind of a busy week. T tomorrow uh, we have our fire safety with the Rochester Fire Department. That's when they come and they bring in their um, their uh, house, firehouse, uh, and that's two days and every every kid gets to go through that, learn about fire safety. Um, so we're excited about that. We have our zebra zone celebration at the park and uh, that is when we have 10 kids um, that were drawn from zebra zone who have gotten star cards. Uh, we do some sort of a activity with them, some sort of a um, experience with them. So uh, while the weather is good, we are going to get them outside, let them go out and uh, play at a local park, not not on our playground, and have a picnic lunch and just enjoy some time together. Uh, so we're looking forward to that as well. Um, we have uh, suicide prevention training with Riddle. Uh, this is our second. Uh, training that we go through. Um, it's a requirement by the state every several years. So we're completing that on Wednesday at his building. And um, we have Zebra Zone on Friday afternoon, which is a monthly thing. We do that every every Friday. If you guys would ever like to attend a Zebra Zone, they start at 115. You're more than welcome to come and hang out. Uh, Promise Indiana field trip. This is a yearly field trip that we do uh, in conjunction with the Promise Indiana program, uh, the 529 program. And that is um, a kind of an opportunity for us to get our young kids, our kindergarten kids are the ones that go, and they go out to uh, a college campus. In this case, we go to Ivy Tech in Logansport, and uh, they have different stations set up for the kids to go around, see what different um, job types or career paths um, can offer, law enforcement, nursing, engineering, welding, um, education, nurse, I mentioned nursing, things like that. They just have different things set up, different stations. The kid, kids get to go around and it's a, it's a real good uh, trip for them. And uh, Betty Martens has been uh, heading that up and helping us with that. And uh, she does a fantastic job organizing that for us. And casting goes with us down to that trip. And uh, it's always a good trip for us. So we're looking forward to that. And I do have to mention something that we did have um, happen on Monday. Uh, we had our, not this Monday, last Monday, uh, we did have our um, our annual field trip to McClure's Apple Orchard for first grade, and uh, that's a really good trip. Uh, normally when we go, it is uh, extreme heat, and uh, we're buying a ton of those uh, uh, slushy apple ciders by the end of it because everybody's just burning up. This year it was chilly, so it was a whole different uh, uh, experience for us and the kids. Uh, but the kids did great and uh, they always uh, enjoy that trip and and so we're really happy to do that the only last real thing that i'd like to mention is just uh, a big thank you to um, the rochester uh, community as a whole in support of the passing of melissa belpedio uh, the uh, her her requests and her wishes were instead of flowers that um, people donate supplies uh, for children school supplies and um, at her service, uh, there was uh, well over 200 backpacks. There were boxes and boxes of school supplies there. And uh, the family was very excited to be able to take and share that with some of the local schools in the uh, community, um, not just Rochester, but um, Akron as well. And um, I wanna just personally thank everybody that was involved in that. Um, it, it, I know that Melissa is looking down and very excited to be able to continue to help kids she did a wonderful job. She will be missed, um, but uh, uh, it was an honor and pleasure to work with her. And um, that's 
That's all I got. And when is that um, Thomas field This Friday. This Friday. Yes, I should have that on my calendar. I don't know why. I don't. Anybody wants to go to that? It's a good time. Thank you. You can't field trip anyway. I'm sorry. You voted that. <laughs> <laughs> when I said everybody, I was talking about the. <laughs> uh, at Riddle, we had our third grade concert right before break, so shout out to Mrs. Weaver in the third grade. They did a great job, as always. As Snyder mentioned, we had intercession at Riddle and also held our fall festival. Uh, the word on the playground was it was the best grilled hot dogs and hamburgers we've ever had. Uh, but a shout out also to, uh, we had lots of people helping. Um, I'm just trying to think, like Sarah Downs and her crew were helping with the pa pumpkin painting. I know Michelle Jager with uh, the photo shoot area and Elena Adams had a DJ thing going. So there's a lot of cool things happening. So it just takes a lot of people to put that on, but well over a hundred kids. I tried to count Snyder. I know you do every year, but they kept running. <laughs> uh, I line them up. <laughs> we had our, uh, had our academic awards for all of our kids just this uh, past Friday. So it's always fun to do that, honor them for their hard work for the first quarter. And um, I think as everybody else, we, we participated in the earthquake drill just a few days after the rest of the country did. <laughs> uh, we had some conflicts happening. Um, then upcoming, uh, we've got our Veterans Day lunch. We've got a Halloween door hop and our book fair is also coming up. So end of October, November will be busy. And you have uh, third and fourth grade girls and boys basketball. Yes, that is that started last week, I believe. I'm sure it did. Yes, yep, and they had their first games, I believe, on Saturday. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, the gym is cooking. Yes. <laughs> um, a lot more of the same. We had a choir concert, and shout out to the RMS choir. They may be small in numbers, but they sounded amazing, and um, that program does seem to be growing a little bit for uh, seventh grade moving on to eighth grade as well. So that's great. Um, we had intercession. We had a lot of students come to intercession. 22, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it was a lot, because it's usually pulling teeth to get them to come. So um, we had some ladies working this year that incorporated some facts into it, into the math, and some cooking, and some fun things, and I think that really kept the kids coming back. So shout out to those ladies for doing a great job. We also had enrichment with Mr. Kistler, who we had five to seven kids go learn how to play pickleball, and they were very excited. It was a little chilly. We gave them some hot cocoa, sent them on their way, and they had a good time. So good, we heard some good things about that as well. Um, our PBIS day was a great success as well. We always have fun on those days. We did some powder puff stuff in the morning and then had a little fall festival in the afternoon. So kids had a good time on that PBIS day. Um, coming up, well, we also right now have Shark Tank going on in Mr. Wilson's class. So um, if you ever want to stop by and see that, that's, that's fun. The kids do actual Shark Tank. They play the music and everything and there's some sharks and we have to sometimes argue about you know what we'll offer and who they end up going with for bragging rights um, so that's a good time in his STEM class in Project Lead the Way. Coming up this Friday we have a costume party in Haunted Locker Room after school that's always a big hit they love the Haunted Locker Room so that will be fun after school. We have our Honeywell field trip coming up for sixth and seventh grade on October 30th. They're going to go see the play The Lightning Thief and we have a Veterans Day lunch coming up and program with the high school. So I think that's all I have. Hit it, Kistler. <laughs> Ready, Kistler? You got our dance plan. I'm just <laughs> you better work, Kistler. Right. <laughs> Ball the drop. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. I'm going to ask for forgiveness right now. So right. That happens because yes, I we can be done. I could be on the way home. <laughs> well, I guess I tried to figure that out. I'll skip to the next thing. We did uh, have our band showcase this Saturday. Um, in the morning, I was kind of nervous, and then it became beautiful out. That's because Miss Bendez is doing such a good job, so <laughs> we appreciate that. Um, A.D. Remy hosted the regional. We had four different communities visit our gym this Saturday. Um, it had some pretty thrilling volleyball games, a couple five-set matches. Um, that went really well as well. 
Our calling it, well, I can't do that either because you're supposed to be on that too. Because we had a good <laughs> game plan here. Um, FFA Soils Competition, we took 7th and 17th out of 49 teams. 7th place was two away from going to nationals, so I know they have a goal of that for next year. Our alternative school is um, collaborating, not just with the youth outlet, but also with the Purdue Extension Office. They did some uh, fun cooking activities building those life skills for those kiddos in our alternative setting. Uh, Mr. Holcomb's doing a great job of building those connections and relationships with our community. I shared it with you early today too, Kistler. Uh, we did have intercession. Um, it went well. We had, uh, I think at the most, 68 kids at the least 62 kids Monday through Thursday um, getting some of their credits recovered, whether it was for attendance or lower grades in math and English, so that's a huge uh, thing there. I want to give my teachers credit because I require them to put their grades in before they leave for break, and that gives us more teeth to that intercession piece. Uh, we had a fall choir concert. Um, it was in conglomeration with uh, Mrs. Murphy's kids, and it went really well. The kids did awesome, and Miss Allen's going to go to the Kiwanis um, Club with our Manitas here, I believe, next week. Uh, we wanted to thank Snyder um, for all the school supplies. I know he didn't do, he brought that to, oh, hey, this is show. <laughs> this is what Mr. Lousen and uh, I have been working really hard on with our new heavy equipment, but the video you see is taken by our radio and TV pathway, so it's kind of a combination of what we have going on there. Uh, we want to thank Westside Tractor, Green Mark John Deere, and locally New Holland. Um, we had six skid steers out there for our kids to use. You'll notice that's on day three because we are really getting it now. We went from crawling around to scooting around there. You can see we worked on moving dirt and then the last day they worked on grading dirt. We haven't released this on Facebook. I saved it for the board meeting because uh, the drum footage is pretty cool, but we're going to share that with our partners and things like that, but I wanted to show you guys, and that way it gives me a chance to encourage you November 13th to the 17th. We actually have five mini excavators lined up, so they're going to come out, and our kids are going to go out there, and they'll be running mini excavators, and then as we move on, we'll eventually have skid steers and minis, and we may even do a backhoe day. Actually, on October 26th in Indy this year, they only invited donut schools. They didn't include us. But next year we plan to go to India and win the competition with skid steers and mini excavators. If you know Mr. Lau, he's pretty competitive, so we're probably going to sneak up there and get a sneak peek of what they're doing so we can win it next year. Cool. So that's kind of what we got going on with that program. It's really taken off. Uh, for the mini excavators, we had uh, Rochester Glass and Chris Brown reach out to us, so they're going to become partnering up with us some equipment. I uh, met with Joe McCarter today. RTC right now is in a big build out. But once that build out is done, which he said probably 24 months, but that's okay, they also are wanting to get on board and allowing us to utilize some equipment. So partnering with those local companies, that uh, pathway is really growing. Um, I know I jumped over the culinary class, but they did the chili cook-off, made some really good chili. They actually had uh, 12 different chilies in the building that uh, had to taste test to pick out which one they were going to use. So we did that. But that was also a collaboration with another pathway in our intro to construction class. Our new teacher, Mr. Lamer, made the booth for that, so our pathways are starting to kind of interconnect with the high school. Some of that's because we're trying finally figuring out what the state has going on for us, so we're really excited about some of that. Um, is Meg here? Meg, it deserves a huge shout out, PSAT this week. Well, we'll just keep it that we got through it, but um, <laughs> it was her first experience with standardized testing from the state that didn't go so hot. But she was a champ, and Mrs. Brown and my guidance counselor were champs. Um, we had to turn in 90 irregularity, irregularity reports, and uh, I heard the guys on the phone tell me at least six times it was their fault, not Kistler's department's fault. So Nathan from Tech and Kistler also deserve a lot of credit because there's a lot of stress when that's happening. So I appreciate Meg, Steph, and those guys uh, for getting us through that because it was a pretty stressful day. And we wrapped that up today, so we're really excited about that. Uh, moving forward, we have the FFA convention coming up November 1st through the 3rd. 
November 10th, we're hosting the Community Veterans Day in our gym or one of the community events in our gym. Um, RMS is coming over. Uh, some of our kids are involved in that, so that's going to be a neat experience. What's November 9th is our Veterans Day November luncheon where the veterans are coming to eat with our kids. Uh, 17th, 18th is the fall play. November 20th is our JAG initiation, which is kind of is a really big deal for us. And then November 13th through 17th, again, we'll have the mini excavators over there. We want to thank uh, Sheriff Heishman in Fulton County, I guess, government. I don't know that they uh, allow us to go back there and play on the land. And it helps us. People are a lot more willing to give us their equipment to use when they know we're going to store it in the impound lot. Where they're locking the key. So we appreciate that. Thanks, Kissler. Good work. <laughs> Any questions from our principals? Wendy, do you mind sharing out for a lot of working space? We sent three girls during fall break for the survey test, and all three of them passed um, to work on the high school, and one was from Riddle. Um, we've had all four buildings open to students so they could eat during intercession. The high school culinary class came down and we showed them how to operate equipment. We test cooked some cookies, some pizza, and some California blend, and they had a little sampling there. And uh, the bigger thing that we opened up is verification that's required from the state. We are in the same pool as we were last year. There's a three that had to go out to the households. We're waiting on responses right now from them. Um, coming up, we have all four locations open for veteran meals for them to come in and eat. We have our Kiwana turkey dinner coming up and the verification will cap off to where I have to submit that to the state, and then we'll wait to see what they say as far as pending approval with that. Thank you. We're gearing up and have started a winterization process for <clears throat> the, the baseball field, softball fields. Um, Currently looking at, um, we've got three applicants to, to fill a couple positions that we're looking at for the high school custodial. <clears throat> and then uh, I've got, I think, one app for um, a maintenance specialist over, over at the maintenance building that I'm looking at right now. So other than that. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Uh, about status quo with me, we've even got a new driver license last Thursday. We're working him in. He's sub driving now. I think he's going to be a good fit for us, Seth Mans. Uh, other than that, it's, we're staying afloat and it's going smooth. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to share out our next study session is November 7th, and at that time, uh, principals and Megan will be sharing out, and Jen will share out uh, our first quarter data, so i um, ready to share that with you and uh, plans moving forward in regards to what the data is telling us, and then our next board meeting is November 20th, so at that time, I would ask that you bring your calendars with you. We will set the communications calendar for our spring semester January through June so if you bring your personal calendars that will help expedite setting those dates for us at our next meeting so, so um, yes sir Jason I'm sorry I forgot two two real quick things we're having a Veterans Day lunch as well everybody else shared it I completely spaced it um, on November 9th and our first grade music program which is a Veterans Day program is also the night of November 9th as well that's a great program. Great. Um, anybody else have any questions, comments, or concerns before we wrap it up? I have a question about our SROs. Where are we at with replacement? Yeah, I have not heard. I know. I know that we have somebody in. On occasion, they come in for the part-time position. Mitch Scott is serving our full-time position. Um, I don't know if you have anything to share. I know they're trying to work to fill that position, but it's a, it's a difficult <laughs> position to fill. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Elder. I, I will tell you, we have their support. We 
have people in and around the district, but we don't have that second person on yet. Mm -hmm. Do we know if it's a training issue or just a timing thing that's not a good time? I think I think that there are a couple who are going through training, but I think it's you have to have a week. I believe it's a week long as our other school, like four yeah. hour on top of law enforcement and all the other stuff. So, so just a timing thing. Yeah. I know. I think one of the part-time guys, Ben Reason, I think he's looking at uh, getting us started to do a part-time. I think it's up to like 28, 29 hours a week or paycheck. I forget it. So. Anything else? Um, I would make a motion that we adjourn. So. All in favor? Have a great evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. Oscar, where'd you go on break? You got a nice tan. I didn't say part of the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that'll do it. <laughs> the dryer. <laughs> he spent his time in the dryer.